All right, so thank you very much for joining me for um, the must-have tools that you need to start working remotely. Uh, most of us that will be attending this training, and myself included, um, are in a sort of work-from-home scenario at the moment, or at least will be transitioning to a work-from-home um, structure going forward indefinitely until we figure out globally how we uh, navigate this crisis uh, with COVID-19 uh, and for us to be obviously accountable and responsible citizens uh, to flatten the curve and make sure that we're uh, contributing to the solution of making sure that this virus uh, is eradicated as soon as possible. Um, however, with sort of the sort of indefinite future of what work looks like, um, the reason for me running this webinar today uh, and the series for the New Future of Work webinar training series is to help arm you uh, with the tools, the resources, and the guidance that you need to start really to make this transition confidently. Now, some of you might already uh, have you know, been working from home in some capacity before, and some of you have never worked from home uh, ever before. Um, and I think uh, in a lot of ways, you know, we are learning new skills right now, right? To be able to uh, adapt to this new world of work and so that we can keep productive and we can keep sane, right? As we continue to stay at home and manage our time uh, and our energy when it comes to producing great results and being efficient in the way that we do our work. So you might be here if you are a corporate employee that's currently transitioning to work from home and trying to figure out how do I do this uh, while maintaining my family at home, my spouse, my kids, my dogs, right? And even if you're single and on your own, sometimes the, the sense of isolation and loneliness uh, can be overwhelming. Um, and these are the things that we're gonna be talking about today as well. Uh, and for those of you who may not know uh, who I am, uh, I am at Lydia Lee. I am the founder of Screw the Cubicle. Uh, I'm a work reinvention strategist and a small business coach. And I primarily help people to understand uh, and, and sort of translate what their expertise and skills are in their professional field and repurpose that into a meaningful business they can run from anywhere. So it has been about seven years now that I've been training individuals to go into remote work, to go into location independent careers. Uh, so people I work with are freelancers, consultants, solopreneurs, small business owners, uh, these are people that care about work, they want to do great work in the world, but they want work to be aligned with their lifestyle choices that they want. So there's really no better time than my skill sets to be really present right now in the world uh, that we're living in today. So I'm very excited to be sharing as part of this webinar series all the things that I've been teaching all my coaching clients to do and making sure that's available to you at no cost in these training webinars I will be supporting you on every single week. So let me just share my screen for a minute, um, just so that we have, um, there we go, I'm just gonna move this to the bottom just so that it doesn't block the screen. Okay, so um, if you have signed up for this webinar, you would also know uh, that uh, we have weekly webinars that will be updating on the page. So if you go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash webinars with an S at the end, you'll be able to see all the, the, the weekly schedule. We've got a four weeks plan so far, but I'm keeping it sort of open, again, being very adaptive to what's going on with what you need. And so every time we run this, I'm always going to be sending you an email to ask for feedback on your opinion on any topics that might come for you uh, in terms of ideas that you can pass on to me so that I can be creating trainings in the near future for you that are based on your problems that you want solved and how I can really support you in moving forward in this new world of work. And why I'm talking about this new future of work, to be honest, it's you know, a future of work that I've been planning for for many years anyway, uh, but we've sort of almost like been challenged to do this rapidly right now because of COVID-19. Um, and in the sense of preparation, right, in every single webinar we're doing, whether you are a corporate employee in transition or a business owner, right, that is looking to pivot and grow your business through this crisis, all of everything that we'll be talking about every single week is really to help you to think bigger into not reacting, right, to what's going on in the world right now, but being really proactive and forecasting what you need for yourself to be independently having that autonomy over uh, and control over your uh, stability, 
right? Your earning potential and making sure that you feel very safe at whatever pathway of earning potential that you may choose for yourself. So in this webinar series, um, there's also going to be um, new ones coming up every week. So next week, just to give you a heads up and to sign up for it as well, is uh, financial stability as a small business owner. That's the topic we're going into next week. Uh, it'll be done every Thursday, right? April 2nd, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, same time as today. Uh, if you're in the Singapore, Bali, Australia time zone, it'll be the morning of Friday. So it's about 8 a.m. in the morning for me right now. Uh, but the topic we're going to go through here is how do we make your business much stronger when we use this opportunity we're in to identify where your revenue will be coming from, how to offer value right now, and how to pivot your offers to align with the needs of your current market. Now, when I did a poll uh, last week about what was the biggest struggle people were having, uh, a lot of you guys have talked a lot about uh, feeling afraid of selling during this sensitive time, which is really normal, uh, and really understanding how can we serve the market and be sensitive to the needs of the market and what do changes and shifts may we need to do with how we market and how we share that voice right now, right, in this time of uncertainty, and are there opportunities to offer things that we may never have offered before, but might be still in, be in our genius wheelhouse? And this is where we're going to start to, I'm going to give you some prompts next week to really start to think strategically how to continue making income, how to continue creating revenue streams for yourself. And this may also be really helpful for you uh, if you are someone thinking about starting a business during this time, which is a thing I'm going to talk about as well. Why actually? Uh, this time is really uh, an amazing time to uh, capture some of the opportunities that might uh, that you might not be noticing, right? So if you've ever been wanting to start a business at a point where it's very clear about what's going on in the world right now, I'm going to be teaching you some of the strategies to, to research and really find out what it is that you can offer, if, even if you're not an existing business owner today. So make sure to sign up for that at uh, screwthecubicle.com forward slash webinars is the second workshop that's on the list. Uh, and then two weeks from now on April the 9th, uh, we're going to be going through the, uh, the topic of how to use your time at home to start a service-based business. Uh, service businesses are so needed right now because people still need services. They may not physically be able to go to their therapist's office or to the nutritionist's office or to the gym or to the wellness centers. Uh, but they really need services that are offered uh, in a way that they can utilize those services uh, at home. And so if you are someone that's ever been dreaming about either growing or starting a service-based business, this is what we're going to go through on April the 9th, uh, because there's never been a more opportune time to start an online service-based business. Uh, in this webinar, you're going to learn how to expand your skill set. We're going to talk about how you can choose what to offer. Uh, identify opportunities to increase your earning potential, even if you're still working full time. We're going to talk a bit about side hustles and exploring work, uh, your own independent work as you work from home and plan for new possibilities with independent work and being your own boss, right? A great time to do this when you have control over your time. And again, going to uh, the webinar page here to sign up for it, we'll make sure that I'm able to send you resources and um, any links for extra materials after we're done that webinar. And then um, on April the 16th, we're going to be talking about how to adapt your work for an online world. This applies to existing business owners that are used to seeing clients physically. Uh, they're also for new business owners that are looking to go, how do I repurpose my expertise into being able to be delivered right in the online world? So we are evolving our work to meet the needs of a marketplace that obviously is becoming increasingly digital. So you'll need to learn how to adapt your skills to deliver your expertise differently. So I'm going to be sharing how to lay that groundwork to start making this transition with your work with confidence and also be sharing a lot of case studies during uh, that webinar training on how different types of people in different vocations have selected different business models and different ways to make an income uh, as a way to inspire you to potentially choose a model that really works for you. Okay, that's going to be a really exciting webinar as well. So all these webinars are really to serve you. And if there's a topic that you uh, haven't seen that is on that page, please email me or go on the chat box right now if you're listening on Zoom Live uh, and share a topic that you would love for me to create for you. Uh, or when I send the replay over to you, just simply hit reply to that email and you'll be able to get a hold of me right away. Okay, so today's topic is all about must-have tools for working remotely because this is kind of the starter point 
of us setting up a you know, stable work environment for yourself, but also a productive one where you can uh, be in control of your time, your energy, you're not feeling your energy sort of, you know, spinning all over the place uh, and really also adapting to new tools that you may not be used to using to make your life easier when you're working from home, right? That's why I'm starting the series with uh, tools because I know that this is what, uh, some of the biggest obstacles for people to maintain a really good work environment. But in this webinar, I'm also going to be talking a lot about mindset, right? And productivity tips that I've been uh, really owning in the last, you know, seven years of being a remote worker, uh, trial and erroring and failing, right? So I'm going to be sharing some of my best tips of how you can actually work less and get more done and how to really structure and plan your days properly so that you're not running amok and you feel like, you know, there's a separation between life and work, especially right now, since you, we are all forced to be indoors, all the more we have to be very, very conscious about how we separate our space and our time uh, for what is work hours, what are our children's hours, what are our, you know, relationship hours, and what are our, you know, wellness hours, and making sure that we have a good balance because we don't know how long we are going to be at home for, and we want to start creating a new normal right, for ourselves, it's going to be productive and sane uh, for our well-being. So as I go through some of this training today, we'll go through some of these concepts and uh, tips for productivity and working um, more, uh, working sim sim simply, but also working effectively. I'll also be sharing some practical tools along the way, uh, and you can download them. A lot of the tools I'm sharing today are completely free. Uh, and I think it would be really helpful to you uh, to use as your, your sort of uh, tools, your arse, ar arsenal of tools, right, that you can have in your back pocket. Um, so I want to start with really um, t t talking about morning rituals, because this is sort of what I believe could really start your day off right, right? And before you start to even open your laptop uh, and really get going in your day, I want you to really... Uh, be, be mindful of how you're starting your morning by grounding yourself and starting your day with something for you. Now, a lot of us um, very easily, as we do when we used to have to go to work, is we sort of wake up in the morning, rustle through, and then, you know, maybe grab a quick bite, and then we rush out the door and we're in traffic and commuting to work. Now that you don't have to commute to work, and some of us are saving like, right, an hour each way, right? That's like two hours a day of not commuting, what else could you be using this time for? And these are some of the things that have been very helpful to me and I think could be helpful to you to start your day before you open up that laptop and that computer and start your day, okay? Before other people's agenda comes into your, play, into your world, it's really to start to stretch your body and start to move it. Uh, I will share a tool that I use, a tip, uh, an app that I use about, uh, about stretching and yoga and meditation. But whatever is your movement exercise, Doing that right now, uh, before you start your day, it's really important to just move that, that energy in your body, get the blood pumping, move those organs, right? And just start to get your body uh, awake for the day, okay? You might want to practice, practice some stillness and meditation, especially if you've got children that haven't woken up for the day. Uh, a great way to keep sane uh, and to um, really stay, you know, sort of centered, right? And, 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 and clear-minded so that you can deal with that uncertainty of what's going on in the world right now with a much more uh, inner sense of calm, which is really important. Right now, maintaining our psychological mental wellness is gonna be one of the most important tools that, that helps you to get through the days of uncertainty right now. Eating a hearty breakfast is really important. I'm not a huge breakfast person, but I know that I'm better off with a smoothie, for example, that I can really down quickly. Uh, and so protein shakes, right? Something that you can prepare ahead of time even, uh, I do a lot of my meal preps on a Sunday so that I don't have to worry so much about making food now that we have to make three meals a day for ourselves and snacks in between uh, since we're going to be at home. Uh, it's a good idea to have a meal plan uh, strategy and doing that in a batch cooking on a Sunday evening might be a great routine for you. Uh, starting your day with reading a chapter of a book, again, a really grounding practice to educate yourself and it uh, doesn't have to be something that is a business book or, you know, a career tool. It can be something that just helps you escape for a minute, helps you to just, you know, spend that time reading something nice for yourself, right? Reading something that keeps your spirit up for the rest of the day. Listening to a podcast could be um, uh, really great for that as well, 
right, in order to keep our minds and our brains to be sort of, again, learning things that are productive and energizing for us so that we are less consumed by negativity in social media and what's going on in the news. We know what's going on out there. We get the same repeats of news every single time. It doesn't mean that we have to, you know, keep our brains just flooded with that kind of information. We can absolutely train ourselves and condition our brains for better information, information that makes us feel good, right? And hopefully helps us to grow as a human uh, and, and as a person through this crisis. Who do we want to become after all this is really done? So start your day grounding yourself. Uh, and I think this will absolutely set the tone for what to expect for the rest of the day. Uh, structure and purpose are really important. So as I said about even starting your day, right, meal planning or your week meal planning on a Sunday, you may want to plan ahead for what it is that you'll be spending time on in terms of your work priorities on a Sunday as well. So I do this usually before I have a dinner. So it's like five o'clock, maybe 4 p.m. on a Sunday, where I take about an hour of my time, have a cup of tea, uh, and start to really think about what are my priorities as a business owner. And for some of you, it's about what are your priorities as an employee, right? As a manager, as someone who's maybe leading a team. Uh, and to take that time to clarify for yourself your most important priorities and projects that we need to actually uh, keep in mind for where we want to spend our energy and time for the week. So this allows you to really time block specific attention and focus on your schedule. Now, um, a time blocking is, is a thing that I do a lot. You'll be able to, if you ever saw my calendar, you'll see that there's color codes of things that I do. And I time block things to create. I time block to publish. I time block to reach out to clients. I time block obviously for client calls, right? All these time blocks are really necessary, not on just live calls that you might be doing with a colleague or a client, but really when you're creating things, right? So if you're planning a marketing strategy or you're writing an article, right? Or you're planning a standard operating procedure for your team, you want to be able to block off an ample time to create those materials and not just hope and wish that you'll do it somewhere between a nine to five schedule. That is one of the biggest things to help to prioritize your time and get you motivated to start on a Monday. Now, when I send you the PDF for these slides, I'm going to also send you uh, a Loom video I did about time blocking. That's going to really help you if you haven't watched it already. I sent it out a week ago, but maybe you haven't received that email. Uh, that Loom video will also help you to think about how and why we want to time block and theme our days according to uh, the way that our brains work. And I'm gonna explain that in a quick minute here, uh, because how you do your tasks and when you do them and how batched they are in similar categories of a theme is really gonna allow you to do your work a lot more efficiently. Now, this is a template that uh, I can share with you is by a friend of mine named Marie Poulin, who is a designer. Um, you can go to uh, bit.ly forward slash Marie Agenda, and you'll be able to get her free template on a software called Notion. Now, I use Notion a lot for planning my week. It's a beautiful platform that you can actually create templates from existing ones like Marie has done for Notion, or you can create them from scratch if you are someone who's quite artistic and a bit of a designer. I'm not. I need things to look pretty because <laughs> I don't know how to make them pretty. So Marie's uh, template here, which is the weekly agenda uh, that has milestones to complete. It goes by day of your most important tasks and your to-dos. Uh, it even has a habit tracker if you're uh, uh, tracking your habit uh, and reflections for the week. Uh, and so this is a really excellent template. I use this religiously every single week and I top this up and I refresh this list uh, for myself every Sunday in order to plan my week so that when I start waking up on a Monday morning, I'm super clear about what it is that I'm doing for the week. And that can really take away any anxieties and angst that you feel about working from home and also just keep things on track for yourself when you have a moment to plan and brainstorm some of these things. Um, you can also thank Marie for this template if you are going to download this. Uh, she's on Twitter, she's on Instagram, she's on Facebook at Marie Poulin. You can tweet her or send her a message saying that you heard about her template from me uh, and ask her for any templates that might be some freebies that she might be offering. But this is an excellent tool and resource if you're looking to structure and, and give purpose to your week on a Sunday, uh, right? That we're planning our week ahead of time. So as we think about also um, 
prioritizing our week and prioritizing our important tasks, we want to think about how we manage our energy. Uh, because it's not really time management that I find that people have a problem with. It's really how we are uh, using our energy and how we are um, planning for how we use the energy that really either helps us to get things done faster or prolongs our efforts to complete tasks. So there's a thing called context switching. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. And again, I've emailed this last week, but I'll share a bit of that again in the email. I'll send over to you in the replay. Uh, context switching is when we have been trained to think that multitasking is the way to do things. I myself have fallen victim uh, to believing multitasking is one of my power tools. Uh, but in, in reality, uh, it's been shown that we lose about 60% of our time when we choose to multitask because the, the human brain, the minute it starts to uh, start to switch gears, you know, from like a writing task to a strategy task to a creative task, right? It starts to use different parts of your brain and it kind of has to rebegin again. It's almost like to start the engine again to kind of start that pattern of that behavior towards the new task. Right. So we really lose time and we lose energy when we do that. So what do we do instead of switching context and multitasking? We think about batching tasks, right, that are similar or that uses the same part of our brain that will ensure that we're going to be more productive. So if you know that you have a strategic time that you need to spend every week on brainstorming for your team or brainstorming for your projects or thinking up of strategies for your clients projects, you might want to choose a day in the week, maybe in the beginning of the week, like a Monday. I like to do my planning on a Monday and strategy on Mondays. Um, and you do all your similar tasks on that day and theme that Monday as planning day, which is what I do, right? And so when you can keep your brain focused on the same type of behavior, the same kind of part of your brain that can be activated fully, it's going to serve you so much better for the day and then choose another day for something like writing or producing, right? Editing, like whatever those sort of things that, uh, that, that need a different part of your brain to be again into a different theme. And what is also a great tip to remember is when you start each day with each theme is to do that one important or hard thing first. Now, what I mean by that, there's always this one thing on our checklist that we kind of don't want to do and we push it till the end of the day. Now, that's what I do <laughs> a lot of the times so is an avoidance strategy is what we think we've got eight hours today and we can just do it at the end of the day. But I guarantee you, as you start to work, we're not, first of all, you know, very efficient at an eight hour day. We're about efficient at four hours. So your best work should be done within your first four hours. And actually choosing before you do anything else to deplete your energy, because you have no idea what the hell's gonna happen for the rest of the day. You could get a sick kid, you could get, you know, like problems happening with internet connection or getting hold of your coworkers or whatever could happen for the day. Before any of those things start to screw with your well-being, you know, and your patience, choose to do that hard thing that you know would move the needle for a project, right? Or help you to get to closer to a result that you really, really want. And that hard thing, you probably know what that is. And if you start doing that when you have the most energy in the beginning of the day, it's really going to help you actually feel really complete, right? And getting that done. So theme days, as we talked about, right, allows you to have better focus and less context switching. So you may want to do things like schedule meetings or feedback rounds with your employees if you manage a team, right, on the same day. So you're doing calls, you're doing all that sort of communication, conversation, feedback on one day if you can, okay? Or maybe it's two days, maybe it's Monday and a Friday, right, that you're able to do that. Uh, you might be planning on a Monday, you might be doing more creative work on a Tuesday. Right now that you have a bit more autonomy over your time, you're able to do this a little bit more effectively. And you can also think about planning according to your personality, right? Uh, where can your tasks match your energy levels during the week? So for example, I kind of need a second wind by the time like Thursday rolls around. So I kind of do sort of my least, um, you know, brain power activities between Monday and Wednesday because, uh, sorry, my, my most uh, brain power activities Monday to Wednesday and do my least brain power activities like Thursday, Friday. So I do things like learning days on a Friday. So if I need to learn a new tool, I need to learn how to use a new software, I need to maybe do a bit of research on um, my customers. I will do those things at the end of the week because it's sort of low brain power and I don't need that much energy for it. But if I have clients that I have to be on and I'm going to be switched on or I'm producing content, 
or I'm strategizing or doing my outreach campaigns, I'm doing that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays. And that's the way that I work. And I also know mornings are my best time. Now, you might be different. You might be someone that um, wants to do more of your active things at the end of the week and do more of your planning things in the beginning of the week, right? So you can gauge how you like to work. That's the great thing about independency, right? And just analyze and observe, especially if you're using that template about, right, some notes for the day on every single tab for the day. Just note, like, when was your best working hours? When did you feel most energized? When did you feel you produced the most and why? Right. And just take note of that every single week so that as you plan your week again, you can start to really take note of these efficient, productive pockets of time for yourself. And then you'll be able to plan even better for your time in the future. And talking about your time, right? Work when you're most productive. So as I just said, if you're able, choose the batch of four hours where you're most productive, because that really is about the, the level of efficiency of top up that we can have for most humans. Uh, you can stretch it to eight hours, but really your best work is in your first four. Uh, and again, choose to work on your most important projects or tasks that move the needle for results in your first batch of four hours. If you can, save calls for the afternoon so that you can get your best work done in the morning, especially if you're a morning person. So I when I used to run a bigger team, I used to save all my team meetings at about three o'clock in the afternoon because... I don't want to, um, I know my energy level is depleted by that time, right? Uh, and I know that if I get a team meeting in play, I'm going to be so sort of riled up in needing to do stuff with my team and plan things for them and answer questions, that I'm going to start to kind of, you know, like my energy will start to dissipate for doing some of the other work that's important to me. So I tend to have meetings and any calls with team members in the afternoon and do my best work in the mornings. Hopefully that um, might be something that could work out for you as well. These are some of the productivity tools that uh, I would love to share with you today to track your progress, timelines, project responsibilities, and, 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 and project communication. Now, this is something you can use if you're the only person managing a project or if you're with a team. And uh, both tools are really easy to use depending on the kind of visuals that you like, okay? I'm an Asana user. Uh, some people are Trello users. So they're both the same kind of tool. You use either or. Uh, Asana's on the right-hand side, which can be sort of listed like that, right? It's a list view. They also have an icon view now. So if you're a little bit more like the left side, right? Like Trello, where you have, you like blocks and you sort of like the column style uh, management, a uh, project management view. Asana has that too as well, but I would suggest to trial both and see what software works for you. Now, both are free, but it helps you to actually start to plan out your projects not just on paper, but really somewhere where you can assign timeline, like deadlines, you can assign roles, you can assign progress, right? So that when someone gets things done on the checklist, it'll actually measure like, okay, they've done 60% out of 100% of the project. That's really great if you're managing a team and be able to eyeball what's going on in each project really easily. And they're all color coded, as you can see. Uh, if you have things that you're producing content every week for your business or your employer, right? Or your company, uh, you can start to really do lists like this, right? In Trello, like your to-do list, uh, in progress bar, right? Or in progress column, what needs to be reviewed? You can shove that over. You just click and drop. And then what is completed so that you can sort of, again, measure your progress of what gets done, right? Throughout the week and be able to track what's going on with people that you're managing and also track your own results. So these two tools are really awesome. Uh, we mentioned no Notion previously. Now, Notion, you can build something like this, but I find that you have to customize it a little bit more. And again, if you're not a designer, you're not someone that's like me, uh, sorry, uh, that is like me, that isn't a designer and wants something that's pre-templated, pr pretty easy to use, I would suggest one of these tools to really start to plunk in your to-do. So after you use your Notion agenda list, right, the one that Marie Poulin designed that I just shared with you, that you can get on bit.ly forward slash Marie Agenda. Use that as your bird's eye planning for the week and then start to plot like those detailed to-dos, right, for your projects into these tools. And then you're going to have a really cool, complete system of a structure of how to manage your, your projects. You might want to think about time trackers as well, especially if you're someone that does want to feel like you know how long it takes you to do something, right? Uh, sometimes a lot of my freelancer clients will do this where they know, hey, when I'm pricing out the service, 
here's how long it takes for me to design a sales page, right? Or design a logo, right? For you, if you're an employee, it might be something that you may want to be able to track every week so that you know when you have to do projects at home, you know how long it takes to write an article, to do a procedure, right? To film something, like whatever it is that you're doing, you might want to track your time so that you can, when you time block, right? Every single week, you're really time blocking ample time, the right time. So it takes you an hour to do something, but it, uh, you know, it, but you're only blocking half an hour. You're always going to feel rushed, right? You're always going to feel overly scheduled, right? Or, or under utilizing the time that you have. So uh, some of these time tracker tools are called toggle, T O G G L.com. Uh, and also the Pomodoro technique of tracking your time, uh, or you can use a timer on your phone as well to be able to do that at tomatotimers.com. There's an app there you can use it for your phone or you can use toggle.com to, um, measure this is a cool tool to measure how long you spend on um billable hours so uh, things that you're doing that actually makes you money right or that you're employed for and then what sorts of non-billable hours like if you had to do research or if you had to go on social media you know for certain things that you're not being paid for it can help you to actually really track uh what how many how many hours you're spending a week on on productive hours of paid work and non-productive hours that you might need to cut down or balance out a little bit that might still be necessary for your work, right? But maybe you've overly spent time, right? On social media or other web pages that, uh, you know, can, is actually sucking up your energy and sucking up your time. So this is an excellent way for us to take an audit about where we're spending our energy, where we're spending our time and be able to even communicate that to our team or to our bosses, how long it takes for us to do certain things and manage our schedules a little bit more efficiently. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is your space, right? Your dedic like why it's important to create a dedicated workspace. Uh, your workspace is really important because this is where you're going to be there consistently every single day and where you know you activate for work, right? So try to choose the same place every day, preferably with a door if you can, so that it's just easier for people not to distract you. But try to refrain from working on your bed. Try to refrain from working on the couch. Even try to refrain from the dinner table if you can, uh, because we just want somewhere that's not as public and especially things like the bed or the couch is just going to kill your back and you're going to need a lot of physio by the time you're done. Now, I'm currently sitting on a, uh, standing on a standing desk right now and I'm a huge believer in standing desks. I'll show you some of my co contraptions in a minute, uh, but you might want to think about different ways of actually creating a great desk that's great for your posture because you're going to be working uh, like this from home uh, uh, indefinitely. You want to communicate expectations to your family, your spouses, your kids, if you can, any uh, uh, helpers that are in the, in, in the, in, in the house. Uh, a do not disturb policy, like maybe it's a sign on the door. It could be um, a ribbon wrapped on a doorknob. It could, if you're in an open workspace and you don't have a door, maybe you have like a, 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 something that you, an icon that you, you know, put on the table. Maybe it's like a candle, you know, or a, a piece of Lego uh, that tells people that I'm working right now. Or if I have headphones in, this means I'm working and please leave me alone unless it's an emergency or slip me, slip me a note. That's going to be really important for your productivity. Uh, you might want to negotiate hours with your spouse if you're taking care of your kids. It might be that, hey, I'm on, I'm on board where I'm taking care of the kids for breakfast in the morning and you get to work and then we do a swap in the afternoon, right? It's time to have that open communication with uh, your, your spouse, uh, whether you have kids or not, in order to actually get on the same page about what your needs are and to maintain a bit of boundaries, right, for the structure that you need for your time. Um, consider a standing desk. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that I've been constructing a standing desk, but I can tell you from someone who've had chronic back pain and neck pain for like my entire life because of being at work for 70 hours a week before, um, a standing desk has completely eliminated my, my back pain at least 50% right now. Uh, and that's because I'm not only having a standing desk, I'm combining it with moving my body at, at, at top of every hour so that I feel that I'm getting the stretch that I need. A standing lets me move my body a little bit more, whereas that sort of static stand, uh, sitting is really, really bad for our posture. And lastly, in the time we're living in at the moment, which is the time of Corona and COVID-19, hydrating is really important from what I have heard from some, some of my nursing friends and doctor friends to keep our lungs and our throats hydrated. Okay, just so that um, if we, and especially with warm water, it's really important right now, uh, have a flask 
uh, or something, you know, a flask that can maintain the, the temperature of the water if you can. Uh, every 15 minutes, take a sip of water. And that's going to help just in case if there's been any virus in your um, throats, right, or in, inside of your bodies, it can potentially be uh, eradicated by warm water and warm things in your body, okay? And hydrating, by the way, friends, are just a good thing anyway, uh, because we don't do that enough, okay? We don't do that enough for our, um, for our bodies. And I think that if we're standing and, or sitting stationarily, we need to just, and, and we don't think about moving so often and getting water, just have a flask, have something ready on your desk. That will be easy for you. Uh, these are some pictures of past standing desks that I've had to create from, uh, you know, traveling a lot and being in different homes, right? So I'm no stranger in having to figure out what to do. Uh, on the left side, when I was in Oaxaca, Mexico, and didn't have any desk except for my uh, dining desk, and it didn't work very well for me. So I had to plunk myself on the, uh, the, the dryer and the, and the clothes washer. <laughs> That's what that is. And so I had to have a pillow. I had to have uh, something to prop my you know, laptop on. Uh, and that was where I worked you know, for a couple months, actually. Uh, and make sure that I, I turned off the washing machine when I did that and did all my calls and everything there. Uh, on the right side is when we did a home exchange in Vancouver last winter. Uh, and again, this is someone else's home and I took all my board games. Any set Settlers of Catan fans here? <laughs> One of my favorite games. Um, and used that to prop up my newly um, you know, purchased MacBook Air from Boxing Day. And again, made sure that I'm standing. So there's several ways you don't need fancy equipment. Uh, if you can order from Amazon right now to be delivered, uh, having, you know, sort of gel pad um, things for your wrist. I get a lot of carpal tunnel if I don't have that. Uh, Bluetooth, mouse, and keyboard if you can, and if you're on a laptop. And just something to prop that up, use some books, right? And just choose a desk that, again, uh, allows you to stand, okay? And just adjust accordingly. And I can guarantee you, if you try a standing desk, in the end of seven days, you will feel different in your body. I can't stress that enough. This has done wonders for me. Okay, moving on to self-discipline as we work remotely at home. Refraining from social media is a really good thing right now, or being able to just at least dedicate a time slot. If you have to be on social, to just check in on the news here and there and you know, reach out to uh, your family and friends, that's fine. But do limit yourself because I'm seeing so many people feeling overwhelmed, burnt out, depressed every time they just go on their newsfeed, right? And maybe when you're working for the day, a good idea is to turn off your notification for your apps on your phone because they're just relentless. People are just posting shit all the time. And so just don't get distracted and just start focusing on your reality, right? You get to choose how you want to feel, right? How you calm yourself down, how to protect yourself and be safe in your own reality. Uh, and I think that the more we sort of refrain from looking at the angst and the panic that certain people might be going out there thinking they're helpful sharing some of those news, it may not be that helpful for your well-being. So some of the tools that I use to refrain from my sometimes automatic scrolling, right, or just opening up those tabs constantly when I'm working and want to distract myself when things get hard. Uh, I have an app called Kill Newsfeed that's installed on my Chrome uh, that my entire Facebook is blank, which means that I can uh, go to certain accounts and post things on my, my profile, but I can't scroll. There's no newsfeed on my account, which really helps me to not um, get in that toxic negative news cycle. Self-control is another app you can install that actually gives, it's a timer and it gives you, uh, you can choose the list of uh, uh, websites. Like if you go on Twitter a lot or you go on uh, Instagram a lot or Facebook or whatever websites, right? Like Reddit, right? That you want to just block yourself a little bit and have a bit of self-control within certain hours when you're working. That will actually, even if your habit of opening a tab immediately to go on those sites and you didn't even realize you did it, um, self-control will block you immediately. And you have to like enter a password and things like that to bypass that. So it just gives you an extra sort of like, uh, you know, barrier to not fall into those bad habits and train you a little bit on not um, falling for that, you know, mindless scrolling, numbing activity when you're working from home. Uh, another great thing is to use Google Incognito. Uh, that's something that's available if you use the Google Chrome uh, browser. And if you go on Incognito, immediately, whenever you go into a social media, um, you know, platform, it'll ask you to have to sign in, right? Because it doesn't, uh, it's almost like a blank uh, sort of, you know, cache so that it doesn't remember any of the passwords that you have. And again, that 
makes you uh, think an extra step in order to access social media. Now, all these tools are obviously things that you self-impose on yourself, right, as a way to just discipline and create that environment of calm and ease into your life. So take what you will from those tools, but I, I think it might really help you in just maintaining some sanity uh, during this crazy time of information and negative news. Uh, Self-care is really important as we work from home as well, right? So knowing when to take a break, right? I mentioned moving your body on top of each hour. Um, I use an app uh, on my phone called Work Rest. You can search for it uh, the, uh, on, on your uh, Apple Play or if you're on um, an Android, uh, right? In your, in your Google Play uh, menu item. And there's lots of apps and you can even use your own timers on your phone where it can actually, um, these apps are specific for work and rest. You can set, for example, how many hours do you wanna work before you take a break? Okay, so mine, for example, I wanna work 50 minutes at the sprint. And then at the top of the 50 minutes, it's gonna give me 10 minutes of movement or a break. So that's when I get a drink of water or I stretch or I just use one of my um, bands at home and just stretch out my, my shoulders because when you work, you just sort of move to the front. And so you wanna just do a lot of making sure that your arms go back for 10 minutes or even five minutes in order to, again, recondition your body for health. Schedule your lunch time, really, really important. Uh, don't eat at your desk because that's gonna be a really bad habit for you. Uh, but actually take a real break. Don't bring your laptop to you. Instead, read a book, say hello to a friend, call a friend. But just really make breaks a real break, okay? Don't work during that break and that's gonna help you maintain that sanity. Play with your kids. You know, read the book that you haven't read for a while, right? Take some time to just care for yourself. And lastly, pick a finishing time. Know when you are actually going to finish your work and actually finish on time because it's gonna be really tempting for us to continue work when we have our laptops and our work so available for us every single day. I know I do this a lot as an entrepreneur, so I literally have to put my laptop in a separate room in order not to be tempted to check my email, right? To go online, to plan something when I don't have to do that right away. Uh, you're gonna feel that need sometimes because you're still learning how to be productive and just, you know, just really have those proper boundaries for yourself. These are some of the self-care apps that I um, use regularly um, and it's been very helpful for me, especially since I can't go to the gym, I can't go to yoga classes, I can't leave the house. Um, there's a free app called uh, Down Dog app uh, if you go into your phone or your websites uh, or your browser, sorry, uh, you, you can download any yoga or high intensity uh, classes for free. So I use both uh, yoga and the hit classes on the down dot app, which is the app you see on the right side here. And they have the best music. They play Kylie Minogue. They do all sorts of awesome dance music while you work out. And you can do it on your iPad, you can do it on your phone. Uh, and I just put on my headphones, um, my Bluetooth headphones, and I just start to work out from home. And that's really helped me to keep some of my sanity and keep myself um, moving during uh, the sort of remote work schedule. Meditation might be something that you might be uh, wanting to learn more about or grow a practice on. Uh, Headspace.com is an excellent free tool. They, let, they give you a free version as well, or you can buy the paid version for an advanced level. Uh, and that's gonna be, again, walk through guided meditation to start your day right and really start to create uh, some stillness and calm as you start your day or as you end your day. My favorite app for meditation is the 10% Happier app. Right now, 10% uh, Happier uh, has things like singles and sleep meditation and courses on uh, mindfulness that I have really found helpful to dig into during this time to keep myself sane and productive um, and communicating a lot better, right? Uh, for, to myself in my inner dialogue and to others, which is not an easy thing when sometimes we step on each other's toes as we're working from home. Um, and so 10% Happier right now, uh, from what I read a couple days ago, is offering the app for free for any sort of frontline workers like nurses. Uh, if you work uh, anywhere that requires you to be in the public right now, they're offering the app free for you as a thank you for your service to the public at the moment. And they're also in their page, if you click on, uh, I think a menu item called Corona, coronavirus uh, guide or something like that. They give you some of the free podcasts uh, and uh, audio tracks 
that actually is, is going, going to be, a, that's curated for you to again, help you to eliminate anxiety and help you to create a little bit more uh, of, of well-being into uh, your life right now. So 10% happy is what I pay for every single year. And it's something that I start my day with when in, during that grounding time in the morning is just listen to a track for 10 minutes. And that helps me again to breathe, to just ground myself for the day and set a healthy tone for the rest of the day. Um, as you work remotely, you might also be thinking about how you're staying connected because we want to avoid loneliness and isolation right now, right? Uh, in order for us to, again, be still communicating with the people we're working with, but also our family and friends uh, that might need us right now. And it's important for us not to be alone right now, right? So I want to share with you some tools you can use today to not only use for work when it comes to communication and connecting with your team members, but also with your people, like your family, your friends, your relatives abroad. Right now, I believe it's better to over-communicate, especially if you have a team uh, and you're managing that team right now. And that's because a lot of us are having a little bit of a mini freak out about guidance and mentorship and am I doing the right thing because I don't have a colleague to get feedback from at the desk next to me right now. So it's okay right now to pick up the phone and call your colleagues pick up a tool or send them a Zoom link like, you're, like I do here right now, teaching you guys over this platform, right? To start a video call uh, with colleagues or your clients or your bosses right now. It's great to do that because I think it's, it's better to be there for people and to get your questions answered immediately uh, instead of getting um, anxious about not having that support, which can actually bring you to a, a much more negative mindset. Whenever you can, which what, with whatever tool you use, think about showing your face. So either, even if you're using Skype or WhatsApp or even Facebook Messenger, you can choose a video in an audio format. Try to choose video as much as possible because showing your face really will um, bring a lot more humanness to the communication process of how you talk to your clients or talk to your colleagues right now. And that's going to really boost morale for yourself. As you use some of these tools to communicate and connect, uh, whether you're doing these meetings in the beginning of the week or the end of the week or midweek, um, think about brainstorm sessions that you can uh, offer your team, your colleagues, right? People you work with. Uh, brainstorm sessions are really great to jump on a quick, you know, 15 minute Zoom call or a Skype call or a WhatsApp call uh, to really just solve a problem together, right? Instead of waiting for the next meeting or emailing, right? Back and forth, just jump on it and just get it solved together. That's going to boost morale. It's going to help people motivate to know what the next steps are to get going especially if you're someone who is a manager right now, just get out an email and start putting your face into a video call and just help your team like go through the jobs they have to get done for the week. And most importantly, it's a time for us to show empathy and grace and patience. Everyone's learning new tools. Everyone's, you know, figuring out maybe even time zones to work with different people right now. Everyone will be having trouble connecting to tools and using tools because it's brand new to them. Be patient and show some grace and empathy right now uh, so that people don't feel um, that they're yelled at, you know, or that they're screwing up because it's already hard on their well-being and just help and support each other during this hard time. Uh, some communication tools you can think about using. Uh, some of my favorite ones are listed here. Uh, Loom is a tool that I use uh, to communicate with staff with contractors, with my clients. Anytime I want to do a training on how to do something with a screen share, I use Loom. And Loom is what you see at the right here, where I'm teaching a class, for example, to a client about how to fill in a template for a content plan template bring dump. So I'm walking her through, you can see my little video face on the top uh, bottom left there. It again puts a face to the video and allows people to follow as if they're there in the room with you. It allows me to train. And if you're training on the go, you're training team members, you're training clients, Loom is an excellent way to record screen shares with a little video of yourself. Or you can choose not to have video and have just a little photo as well. Uh, or you can go fully front video with no screen share. So it's a free tool to use right now. Uh, in their, in their, and Loom has been very generous to offer uh, free, uh, free pricing right now to their introductory package to film unlimitedly. Uh, and that's an excellent tool to use that's attached to your Gmail. Uh, and, the, and, and the GIF of your video actually embeds onto your email, which is gonna, again, make people click on it a lot faster as well. 
You can use the old school Skype, right? You probably have Skype installed on your laptop. Skype is also a great way to, again, um, be able to communicate via video or audio. Uh, or Zoom, which is the platform we're using right now. And the free, the free version allows you to have any one-on-one -on -one conversations for free, unlimited time. But anytime you have uh, more than one person, you have 40 minutes for free unless you were going to the next paid account. So you can kind of run classes like what you see on the left side here, uh, what we're doing today. You can record classes, you can record conference calls, you can brainstorm, you can have a whiteboard, you can do trainings on it for your team, you can do your team huddle on a Monday morning and a team debrief on you know, a Friday. Everything uh, can be done on Zoom. And again, the great thing about it is that it can be recorded in case there are certain team members that can't join. Okay, this is a great tool for coaching, great tool for client work as well, uh, especially people who are like designers or, um, you know, creative people that need to show their proposals or show their work uh, and get validation or, 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 or uh, you know, like a, like a, you know, affirmation from their clients using a tool like this is really great to use rather than email. So again, these are all the, I'll, I'll send the slides to you guys so that you know where to download these tools. Uh, another thing that I found really helpful to share is how to make sure that when you are booking, you know, these meetings for, with your contractors, your team members, your clients, how to make sure that you're using tools to make sure it's not this go back and forth. What time do you have? You know, when are you available? And then having to go back and forth and waste more time, right? So Calendly is what I use. And they have a free account for one event type and anything more than one event type you'll have to pay. Uh, but it can be your sort of just, you know, like call hours, right? You call it a one event call hours. But it allows, uh, it's, it integrates with your, uh, your iCalendar on your laptop or uh, Google calendars where it, you can block off certain times where you don't take calls and you can set uh, restrictions for how many calls you do a day uh, and what times people can book calls with you. So this, this allows you to just send a quick link uh, for anyone that you want to book a call with and they can book right away in their time zone without bugging you and for it to go that back and forth email of availability. Now, if you have teams or if you are working with people that have more than one person that you have to book a call and you're not quite sure of people's uh, availability, you can use uh, a tool called Doodle. It's free as well, doodle.com. And that's where you can actually pick uh, several options of times that people can choose, right? And everyone takes a vote and you can basically get a summary of a report once everyone votes on the best day and time of the majority. Okay, and you might go with majority rules or you might plan for two different types of calls for plan A and plan B options. So Doodle is what I use, for example, when I run um, my courses, right? Or when I run live uh, programs where I have people from different time zones and I'm not quite sure what times, what times work for them. And I'll give them a voting system and I'll realize that sometimes I need to do two time zone calls or 80% of people voted for this time and it allows me to at least help with being present for a majority of people and then provide a recording for the rest. So this tool is excellent instead of going back and forth and guessing on when people's availability are. Um, other tools that I wanna share with you today that could be helpful if you're a contractor, a freelancer, or just someone that is uh, needing to get paid right now that is not on a payroll at the moment. Uh, these are some free apps that I've recommended to clients that, have, uh, that I've used and have worked out really well for them. Uh, Wave Apps is an excellent tool that's connected to a payment gateway called Stripe, where you can take credit card payments uh, for a fee. There's about a 2% fee, just like PayPal would uh, get, uh, you know, offer it as well. But it's a free accounting software that actually like, gives you all your reports that you need for your tax purposes and for your accountant at the end of the year. So it's an excellent tool to use. And because it's free, I recommend it all the time. Uh, and it has an invoicing uh, um, you know, component as well. It has a profit and loss statement. It, has, it, it, it pings your clients for overdue invoices. It charges by um, bank uh, payments manually or credit card. Uh, and it's so easy to use. Uh, and so if you are thinking about working for yourself or you need a payment uh, tool right now, Wave Apps is one of my number one suggestions. Uh, you can also use PayPal, of course, to if you know how to use PayPal, you already have it. Uh, you can set up a business account uh, and you can also be able to send uh, payment options uh, and payment invoices via uh, PayPal. I find that Wave Apps is a better way. I like Stripe and I like uh, Wave Apps. Uh, 
uh, because it just looks a lot better. You can have your logo on it. And I don't always trust PayPal the entire time because they have like blocked my account before from like having too much activity. And then it took forever to go through, you know, what the robots needed me to do to free up my account. Uh, and so wave apps and Stripe have never been a problem for me. So I would recommend wave apps over PayPal, but PayPal works for a lot of people. So I want to use that, uh, give you an option for that as well. Uh, but that is uh, some great tools to use if you need to get paid. Uh, money transfers. Now you might be wondering why should I maybe need a money transfer or need to send or receive money transfers. Now, during a time of crisis, sometimes uh, you may have family members that are abroad that you may want to send money to, okay, right now to navigate some of the financial um, uh, uncertainty that all of us are experiencing. Or it could be something more uh, related to business or work where uh, you are working with uh, a contractor in the Philippines and you don't want to just pay them by PayPal and you want to save a bit of money on the, the international transfer fees and also the currency exchange that can happen where PayPal and Stripe uh, from you know, the other uh, apps from here, like Wave Apps or PayPal, they're going to usually take a little bit more in terms of currency exchange and you don't keep as much of your money unless you use an app called TransferWise. Now TransferWise is what I use to pay contractors and I also use it to transfer money to myself whenever I'm in different currency and, and different cities in the world. Uh, and you can transfer at very fair uh, like market rates, currency market rates, and TransferWise charges a very fair transfer fee for giving you the service. All in all, you end up saving tons of money than doing a regular bank transfer or doing PayPal, and they'll tell you what money you save actually on the TransferWise app. So this is what you might use to pay international, international contractors and freelancers. If you are using people like that to support you in your business or in your work right now, uh, or it might be a personal reason for you to be sending money abroad uh, to family members uh, in around the world. Online office tools. Now, this is something that I know people ask me a lot about how do I create some organization in the way that it's not everything saved on my desktop? Because just in case something happens, you don't want to be saving stuff on your desktop and you want to be saving some, some uh, it to uh, files and folders on a cloud, right? Something you can access online no matter what. So Google Drive might be something you're already familiar with. I use this to run my entire operations of my business. Um, I pay to get uh, the, the sort of business option where I have more room, but you may not need to. Uh, but this might be something you want to set up for your team. You might want to set up for your own uh, personal office space as you work from home. Uh, and just getting organized is basically how you want to see your desktop or your documents folder. Just set it all up here, okay? And what's great about Google Drive is that you can set permissions for who gets to view certain documents if you're sort of feeling that there are some confidentiality documents that you don't want everyone, right, uh, in the internet to be able to access. It's just, you can always, just like here, you can make it available to different email accounts, different permissions for different roles, uh, or if it's completely a private document for yourself. But having it uh, as a cloud allows you to access that anytime make changes anytime instead of resaving that document over and over again, especially if that link becomes a live link for other people to download the same document. And if you make edits, it's gonna keep changing actively, which is totally you know, easy and efficient for you to manage. Um, Google Drive is my number one suggestion for having a, an online virtual cloud office for yourself. Now, if you're sending just files, like some people are photographers, they're people that send large files, uh, and they just want to uh, only be keeping it to videos or images and it's not documents per se, uh, I would recommend uh, an app called Dropbox. Dropbox, again, uh, gives you a certain amount for free and then you have to pay for larger uh, storage uh, size. Uh, but this is where, uh, where a lot of my photographer, videographer clients will, and, and design clients will store um, right here on the left-hand side in Dropbox so that uh, it's all just imagery, right? And they have client folders that are protected by password and uh, only certain people can access it, right? And, and that's where they give their work there. And it's not documents as, as much because again, you can't edit documents on Dropbox. You can just only do that in Google Drive. But for uh, photos and video files and things like that, uh, Dropbox is, a, is an excellent tool as an alternative. Um, and lastly, as we go through a lot of these apps, right, of being productive, staying productive, and feeling organized and structured 
in how we um, create this environment for remote work is also for yourself, you don't want to create a bit of structure on learning and upskilling and using this time for good to actually um, be starting something of your very own or tapping into an interest that maybe you didn't have time for when you were working full time, right? This is a great time, especially if you're great at managing your time in your workload in your nine to five job and you're able to do your usual eight hour day into a four or six hour day. Now you've learned how to master that as you, right? Maybe implement some of the things we talk about today and improve as a whole of how you are productive. You're going to have some time potentially set aside for something for yourself. And that's maybe how you can start to even gain some stability in the near future if you're preparing for yourself to actually be earning an income separate from your job in case anything happens or just as a way for you to, right, like gain the independency as a business owner uh, that you've always been dreaming about. So you might want to be learning to start maybe a side project or a side hustle for extra income in the meantime. Right? Maybe you use this time to help others as a way to explore what you may want to do as a business. A lot of clients right now are working with me uh, to think about how to repurpose their expertise and transition their skills. And we're working on little mini testing projects of what sort of services right, they can be doing and maybe activating as an income stream down the, down the road. But they can start to do that research and, and, and talking to these clients right now. Maybe it's starting a blog, right? Maybe you have a voice to share about something in your field uh, or just something that you're passionate about. So learning how to write an article on Medium right now or LinkedIn, right? It's a great way, especially if you have expertise in your field and you want to start positioning your profile to be available for hire or to be available to be a freelancer or a consultant in the near future, starting to show your chops online by writing articles and sharing your expertise in things like LinkedIn or platforms like LinkedIn or Medium really allows people to find you and you've got a great asset to point people towards when they're saying, hey, what do you talk about these days or what are you good at? You know, here's a place that you can send them for your expertise, right? And it really helps you to practice your voice and your writing skills. Um, platforms like Udemy, lynda.com, masterclass.com is a place that you can learn a new skill, whether for fun or professional skills. So if there's something that you've been waiting to do, so if you've been waiting to start a website, start a blog, want to up-level your writing techniques, uh, you want to be a better editor, you want to be a better coach, you want to learn how to lead a team, right? There's so many courses out there that's going to support you in, in, in up-leveling your strengths to be not only ready for hire in the future, but to be positioned well, right, in skill sets that might be needed in this new future of work. So start really thinking about what are some of the needs that the marketplace have been shifting and evolving to want now that we're dealing with this crisis. There's going to be some opportunities of new skills and new jobs and new services that can be offered uh, in the time that we are in right now. And that's what we're gonna talk a lot about next week in our next uh, webinar. But for now, really think about what sort of skills you might wanna learn that could be really either beneficial for your industry or beneficial for problems that you see going on in the world right now. Uh, learning a non-work skill is also really important. Uh, you know, my partner right now is learning a lot of mindfulness and meditation right now to ease some of his uh, gut health problems and anxiety. I have the same issues that I go into with him as, as well. Maybe it's decluttering your home to have a much saner, uh, you know, environment for yourself. Maybe something about maintaining that mindfulness, right? So think about, you know, soft skills and also personal skills and um, emotional skills uh, and to build that resilience that we need right now to continue navigating uh, uncertainty right now as well. Uh, maybe it's learning a new language, learning to dance, nonviolent communication now that we have to be with our spouses and family in a lot more close quarters. That might be something that you might be interested to do. So think about that as well as a way to spend your time and stay motivated at work. Uh, so before I go into Q&A, if there is any questions, or also I can answer them uh, if you're watching the replay by pressing reply to the email, and I'm happy to answer it very likely on a Loom video for you to support you. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about what are some of the things I'm doing right now to work with people to ensure that they are ready for this new future of work, but also to have real plan in the go for it. Um, the first thing is uh, for people that have been looking to work for themselves, and this might be one of the most opportune time, as I mentioned, 
to work for yourself and learn how to work for yourself and be able to build uh, financial security and, and career stability, right? Going through uncertain times where you're not relying on, you know, your employer uh, to keep you safe, but relying on yourself to have uh, financial security. So a lot of you might know that I have a course called Work Reinvented. Uh, this is one of my uh, most important courses I've ever ran uh, that is self-guided. You can do it anytime because you have lifetime access to the course, but you might want to do it now, especially if you've got time to upskill. Uh, and it's a course to help you learn how to create a self-employment plan uh, with work you can love. So it helps you to think about what business you should be starting, how to take inventory about the kind of work you should be doing that's meaningful and marketable right out there in the economy. Uh, it helps you to uh, understand how to test out your ideas when you're still working full time, how to build a financial security plan as you transition with a side hustle, uh, and how to actually think about different self-employment pathways like consultancy, freelancing, solopreneurship, right? Um, I really go through such depth in this course uh, that it's going to really prepare you to work for yourself, not in just the technical aspects of things, but strategically on your, uh, in, your, in terms of your own personal reasons to start a business, uh, is going to start to ask you, for you to, to know what business you should be starting and what strengths and skills you'll be really putting out there on the table that's really going to be making you the best kind of income that you can be making. So regularly, this course is 197 and to, for me to support you through this COVID-19 epidemic, uh, we are, uh, I'm offering this at 80% off at $39. And this is a really excellent rate. And if you go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash course, you're going to learn more about what we cover in the course. But as you uh, click to buy the course, uh, you can enter the code screw COVID, uh, all in large um, fonts, right? Or, um, and, and making sure it's sort of uppercase. Uh, and you'll be able to get the $39 rate and, and that 80% off right now. Now, you can buy it for yourself. You can buy an extra one for a friend as a gift. It's a great gift for someone that you know who might be thinking about self-employment or anyone you know that just want to be really in charge of their earning potential. Uh, and I think this would be something that can really help you uh, to navigate uncertainty by being in the driver's seat and being in control of uh, your own earning potential right now with this course. So that's one way that I'm helping you uh, through this right now. The second way uh, is, uh, go is going through strategic coaching. Now, a lot of you have um, emailed me about plans that are important to you at, to ensure that you have stability in your career and your finances and your business right now as we go through uh, all the things that are indefinitely going on with COVID-19 and beyond. Uh, so I, I've been working very closely in very tailored, personalized programs, uh, all about career transition, uh, remote working with teams and individuals, uh, and any personal strategic business coaching uh, that allows you to reach certain goals that you want to have in the next 90 days to the next rest of the year with a real plan for accountability and strategy that's right for your needs. So clients that have used me for one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, have either um, want, wanted help in uh, repurposing their expertise in starting a business being self-employed and the launch plan that we work on together to get that done. Uh, it could also be people who just are figuring out where are, am I in my career, especially mid-career people, and what should I be going after in my career, and where's my most powerful work, and where's my body of work really evolving into. That's also a question and, and problem I help solve in uh, coaching sessions. Uh, and for people that have, uh, uh, right now, are, are challenged in remote work, whether you're managing a team, uh, and you want to have someone uh, to come in and support your team on how to transition to remote work and teach and really go through some of the structures and operations uh, where I can really support you in making sure how to uh, teach you how to run your team meetings, how to uh, like implement the right tools that your team needs, and how to actually uh, coach your team right into uh, an efficient way to work together and independently. I've been also... Uh, doing a lot of work around that, right? Uh, and if you're an individual just like struggling with how to actually build this online office for yourself, offer your skills online, adapt your skill to an online world, that is also something that I can absolutely support you on. So everybody's needs right now are different. So um, as a way for me to analyze 
what it is that you need and how long it'll take for us to get there and what specific strategies we will be working on together and making sure you're accountable to them. I would love to speak to you first, right? In order for me to tailor make something for your needs. So if you go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash call, uh, you will be uh, able to go to my Calendly booking page, book a time slot for about 30 minutes. We can have a human to human chat about what's going on in your world right now. What are you most concerned about? Um, and making sure uh, that we, and e whether or not you work with me, you'll be able to get my uh, insights on what it is that I see being a really great pathway for you to be able to reach your goals. And then we can talk about your options, about what it could be like uh, to be able to work together. Okay, um, so hopefully this has been really helpful to you in order to um, gain a little bit more control over your um, work environment, uh, your productivity, your mental well-being right now. Uh, and I hope that I can keep supporting you uh, as we navigate this new world of work that I'm really familiar with, but I know that a lot of people may not be uh, at right now. But what a wonderful opportunity for us to be accelerated into a loca location-independent careers, for us to have a little bit more autonomy over our time. So it really isn't all, it all it's not really all doom and gloom right? There is a silver lining uh, that's going on right now for us that is allowing us to uh, do more with our careers, to think bigger about being in charge about how we earn an income uh, and potentially allow us to have more time freedom, right? Whatever we need that time freedom it, uh, to, to do, whether it's to spend more time with ourselves and our hobbies or with our children, with our relationships, with our community, like it's going to really open up uh, just a really fascinating and interesting uh, lifestyle, right, for all of us as we go through this together. Uh, so again, I'm going to be running these uh, Prepare for a New Future of Work series every single week indefinitely uh, until I know that you are supported. And very likely, I will be doing this every single week until we figure out what's going to be happening uh, with the future of work. And I'm really excited to be sharing this with you and supporting you through this. So uh, as you may be watching the replay, um, you can absolutely be pressing reply on the email whenever you get the replay recording uh, and you'll be right, uh, you know, learning with me and questions will be answered by me personally. Don't forget to go to screwthecubicle.com forward slash webinars to sign up for upcoming webinars, as I mentioned in the beginning of this one, of the next upcoming topics we are running. Uh, and I will be updating that page regularly as well. And if you're signed up, uh, for any of the webinars, you'll always be in the know for upcoming ones that you might be interested in, right? These are all going to be recorded. I'll, I'll have them uh, available for you uh, on a page uh, anytime. So if you need to go back into things uh, and be able to uh, refresh some of the learning for yourself, uh, all these resources will be available for you. Okay. Uh, thank you so very much for joining me today and taking your time to prepare your work environment and make remote working work for you. Uh, and I hope to see you next week on our next webinar uh, on financial stability uh, as small business owners. Hope to see you there and um, stay safe and sane uh, and wishing you well during this time.